Hey guys, I wanted to throw together this video as a quick guide for learning to play Survivor in Dead by Daylight. Now this video will be showing some intermediate to advanced strategies as Survivor, and if you're brand new to the game, I'd highly recommend checking out the in-game tutorials first. This video will be perfect for stepping up your game beyond that point. Okay, to start we'll talk about looking behind you in a chase. This is a very important thing to learn and is the general base for almost all strategy used in chases as a Survivor. Obviously this isn't going to be easy as a newer player, and you'll have to practice knowing when exactly in the chase to look behind you, as well as memorizing some of the maps or the tiles that commonly spawn in the maps so that you know how to run them while looking ahead of you. To begin to learn this, you may want to practice looking ahead of you and making sure that there are no objects that you'll run into, and then glancing behind every couple seconds to keep an eye on the killer. As you learn the maps more, you'll be able to run over half the chase with your eyes on the killer. This is how good survivors are able to consistently be in a good position, and it is vital for things like looping. Speaking of which, let's get right into the next topic, looping. There are two different tools survivors have to get distance on the killer, pallets and windows. Both of these can be looped. To explain what looping is, it is when you as a survivor mirror the killer's movements so that you keep as much distance as possible when they chase you around an object. This means that each pallet can be looped around once or twice before being used to buy even more time for yourself and your team. This is borderline essential to survivor play because if pallets are immediately thrown and broken, you will run out very quickly and large areas of the map will be left with little to no resources for getting away from the killer. Windows can also be looped. The same general rule is applied, although it can sometimes be harder because most windows have tall walls surrounding them, so keeping your eye on the killer becomes a lot more difficult. Windows are blocked by the entity when vaulted three times in a chase. It's important to know that breaking pallets eliminates the killer's built up bloodlust, so that it's not a problem when running pallet loops. Window loops, however, don't break bloodlust, and if you manage to loop the same window three times without being hit, the killer will likely be significantly faster, and you may want to find a safe pallet to break his bloodlust before too long. Practicing both kinds of loops and learning how much of a lead you need on the killer to be able to do another loop safely is something that comes with practice, and you'll likely take a lot of unnecessary hits while learning. Don't be discouraged and take the time to learn because this is probably the most basic fundamental strategy in chases. If you want even more detailed information on pallets such as how best to play them and what a safe pallet even is, check out my pallet tutorial video which I'll link in the description box below. Okay now on to windows. Now you should already know that there are two different kinds of vaults. A quiet vault that makes no sound and a speed vault that is done when holding shift. Beyond this, there are actually two different speed vaults that you can get, which are commonly known as a fast vault and a medium vault. The way that this is determined is by the angle at which you run to the window, as well as by how much of a running start you get before you vault. For a fast vault, you want to try to be as perpendicular to the window as possible, meaning you want to run straight at it as opposed to hugging the walls beside it. If you try to do it at a bad angle, or if you don't get at least a minor running start, you will instead get a medium vault. Medium vaults are done much slower, and you actually remain vulnerable to hits for a very short amount of time after the vault goes through, whereas fast vaults will leave you vulnerable only for a short amount of time during the very beginning of the vault animation. Knowing how to force what vault to get is very important when looping windows. You'll want to always get a fast vault, even if it means running out from the wall a little to ensure that you have the right angle. Medium vaults leave you very vulnerable and will almost always result in you getting hit. A more advanced strategy you can do is fake vaulting. Fake vaulting is when you pretend that you're going to vault a window and bait the killer into running to the other side to meet you and then running away to get a better position. This is something that is very risky and should only be done based on the playstyle of your killer. If you notice that your killer is commonly trying to predict your vaults and meet you on the other side of windows, then it's the perfect time to hit them with the fake vault. This can also be done with pallets as well and is slightly less risky because pallet vaults are always fast and there's no punishment for not getting a head start in case you need to do a last second vault. One of the most important things and also one of the hardest to learn is route planning. Learning the maps and thinking ahead to know where to run after you use a pallet or window is essential to making your chase last as long as possible. I'm actually going to let this clip of my stream run with audio so you can hear my route plans as I go. Okay, my game this dude it's too fucking you know i don't know if i can get away with this loop or not but we're gonna test it right now not really sure how big this loop is oh we could poggers poggers you gotta get that guy up man you gotta get he needs your help brother oh fuck there's no more pallets oh no there was a pallet in there but i missed it wait we, we might be okay we may possibly oh shit this pallet sucks this is one of the shittiest pallets right here 
Oh, he just broke it anyway. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay, okay. We're in the clear. There should be a pallet down here, right? Or right here. All right. All right, we're hanging in there, boys. We're hanging in there. We're getting zoned right now. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. Death is definitely in our future. Fuck! I don't think there's a... I think the pallet over in that room is still up without a trap. So I can go use it now. Okay, I'll shut myself up now. You can see that my knowledge of the map helps me pick my direction strategically so I can make the chase last as long as possible. This is important to know, but I also can't really do much to teach this besides telling you to focus on it. Maps take time to learn, so don't try to rush this one. I'm sure a million videos exist for this already, but I feel like I need to include spinning. This is probably the fanciest looking way to juke, but also the least effective. It basically relies on the killer messing up their aim, and most montages you see are done at low ranks. Either way, it's fun to do, so I might as well show you how. Basically all there is to 360-ing is using your WASD keys to move yourself in a circle. And then you take your mouse, and you spin it in the opposite direction of your circle. And then you combine the two, and that's how a 360 is done. I'll slow one down for you so you can see it better. It's usually good to throw in a fake in the opposite direction beforehand, or I've even seen some people that do a smaller spin before a bigger spin. Either way, it's a pretty fun thing to do, but do not rely on this to juke. It 100% relies on killer misplays, whereas looping tiles is completely safe and under your control. Okay, I realize that most of this video has been about improving your chase game. The actual most important thing to being a good survivor is efficiency. Knowing what to do and when to do it is the biggest factor when it comes to the survivor team escaping. For instance, you need to have people on generators while a teammate is hooked, so there's not three people all doing nothing waiting for an opportunity to save. This is essentially what separates low rank survivors from high rank survivors. The perk bond is very good for this, as you can see when your teammates are going for a save so you know to stay on generators, or vice versa if your team are all on generators and you need to go get the save yourself. Being efficient not only helps your team escape because objectives get done faster, but you also get a lot more points yourself by reducing the amount of time you waste. This is a very good thing to focus on if you're having trouble ranking up. That's going to be it for this video guys. There are some more things you can learn such as flashlight saving and perk combinations, but those will be in my other videos. Hopefully you guys learned something from this, and if you enjoyed it, feel free to sub to the channel and throw me some feedback in the comments. Thanks everybody for tuning in, have a good one.